Tesla Financials and Big News for the final week of May. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Tesla finished the week up 7.5%, not bad, compared to the Dow Jones up 1%, the Nasdaq up 1.5%, and the S&P 500 up 0.8%. Well, yes, a pretty good week overall, but there's no way of arguing it. Tesla overperformed, and by quite a bit. And as a reminder, the market will be closed on Monday in observance of, uh, you know, Memorial Day, or as I like to call it, happy three days after my birthday day? So what is going on with the stock anyhow? Well, one of the cleaner technicas on the internet is suggesting that Tesla is most Googled investment opportunity in 83 countries and the world as a whole. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, most countries, let's see if they've got a map here. Yeah, look at that. In most countries, we're seeing Tesla right at the top for investment search terms. Now, I think this U.S. and Mexico figure might be skewed by people searching to see if something is in stock at Amazon. Uh, but who knows, man? Who knows? It, uh, it could be a variety of things, but the bottom line is there is a tremendous amount of interest in Tesla. Also on the plus side, Moneyball tweeted out this really cool chart showing actual China EV production for the month of April. And oh, look at that. Tesla is again at number two behind the $5,000 Hong Kong Mini EV by Wu Ling. It's a cool little car, extremely dangerous, but all right. Uh, <clears throat> the good news here is that Model 3 22,000 produced, Model Y 8,000, it's a still a ramping up. And if you take this 30,000, we're at a run rate of what would that be, like uh, 362,000 for the year? Um, that right there is half of Tesla's annual target for production. And Fremont is not exactly slowing down, though production on the models S and X has been kind of on hold for the first half of the year. Should be a rounding error considering how low of volume those vehicles have been over the last few years. Anyhow, this is a truly a fantastic news. And there were naysayers complaining, oh, the production is way down. Tesla is doomed. Stop it, guys. Just stop it. And speaking of the Huling Hong Guang Mini, uh, yeah, apparently there is footage on TikTok of an unofficial crash test. Crushed like a beer can, no one survives. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not surprising for a $5,000 car. According to the news on the Micronet, <laughs> I'm not sure. This is a translated article, so it's a bit sketchy. 90% of the parts for Tesla's Shanghai factory are produced domestically, and the R&D and design center will be built in the future. So this is unsurprising, I suppose. Uh, Elon had always said the objective was to get to about 90%. So the question is, which parts are not being included? And the answer is, well, definitely the FSD chip, maybe some of the inverters or other items like that. Uh, the some of the batteries may not be coming from China. It is not known. There are uh, definitely some components of the vehicle coming from Korea. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. But 90% is a truly fantastic. And there were articles on this in English, but they were, I assure you, worse than this. June 3rd, we've got the big event coming up. Ah, yes, the Tesla Model S refresh unveil event in Fremont. And again, if anybody's got a spare ticket, let me know and I will make sure I'm there. Would love to cover it live, but I just don't think that's in the cards. But don't ask, don't get. Worth a shot. At Jeff Tutorials tweeted, Lots of info. Too much to put into a single tweet, but just to name a few. Tesla's sandbagging Model S next stats. Real numbers are way more impressive. 350 kilowatt supercharging. Version 11 software redesign releasing very soon. I don't know. Sounds like rumors, but it's exciting either way, and we'll know in a matter of days. 
Gary Black is tweeting, investors are underestimating the importance of the Tesla Model S delivery event, fastest production car ever, halo effect for entire Tesla franchise. Fremont event can change the narrative back to EV fundamentals, which are very strong. So that's all, you know, very exciting. And by the way, if you do uh, want to reach out to me for something, I am now going to be using my at 4K podcast account on Twitter. So, you know, check me out. Russian Ministry of Industry and Trade invites Elon Musk to discuss possible Tesla development in the country. This was on May 21st, and, uh, you know, what could it be? Well, on the 24th, regions of Russia are competing to land a potential new Tesla factory. I don't know if this is going to go anywhere. There are a number of issues that would stop it. One is the car market is not that big. Uh, another is uh, the luxury car market is even smaller. The supercharger network just doesn't exist. And it's an expansive country that would need an awful lot of them. And unless there's going to be a concerted effort from the government to aid with the development of the supercharger network, I just don't know, man. I just I don't know. Regions of Russia have entered into competition for the right to locate Tesla plant after the company's CEO said he would consider the country as a place to expand in the future. Now, this could also be for batteries or for technology or for design, but again, remains to be seen and it seems incredibly premature to me. Clean Technica is also reporting Tesla has over 1 million Cybertruck reservations. Now, I've seen some analysis on this that says it might be a million reservations total for different things or a million to date. But, uh, you know, if all of them come through, that's 63 billion in revenue, which is great if even half of it, that would be 30 billion in revenue. And the truth is we're going to see pretty massive cancellations. I know there are a number of investors and YouTubers who have reserved anywhere from two to 50 of these things uh, on the hope that they could instantly enter the RoboTaxi network, which probably is not going to be ready in time for the launch of the vehicle. So I don't know, but even if the reservations are only 100,000 legit orders, that is still a truly massive amount of money and more production than they could handle for a quite a some time. I've been working on a comparison between the F-150 Lightning and the Tesla Cybertruck, but it is not ready yet, and I've still got a lot to chew on. Overall, I'm very impressed with Ford's first effort, but it ain't no Cybertruck. Um... 2,000 pounds of payload versus up to double that. That's not great. Uh, less towing capacity. Bed length is only five and a half feet. Right, because they kept the same shape of the original truck. Fair enough. More storage, more seating. Faster-ish on at least one configuration. More range across the board. Yeah, it, it really... It it's fine. It's fine with the tax credit. It's attractive. If a new tax credit comes out before the Cybertruck hits the street, boy, Cybertruck is going to be pretty darn compelling. But here's the big thing, and I may, if I do make that other video, uh, you know how everyone complained that the Cybertruck is just way too big. I challenge you, look up the stats. The F-150 Lightning is longer, wider, taller, and though it hasn't been announced, I'm going to tell you right now, it's heavier. Because Ford did announce it has the most rugged frame ever used on an F-150. That's a lot of weight, plus, you know, the 1,800-pound battery. But here's the most exciting story. Clean Technica got a good one here. The elephant in the EV room who lives in everyone's heads rent-free. Jennifer, you knocked this one out of the park. The thing is, Ford is spending a tremendous amount of money to market the Lightning. And for that matter, GMC is doing the same with the Hummer. But every time a truck is announced that is electric, it is an ad 
for the Cybertruck. So let's look at Google Trends. Here is interest over time in the F-150. And uh, weird spikes every day at 3 a.m., sure. And then look at that, a little bit of extra interest with the actual unveil. Conversely, here's the chart for Tesla. So what, what you're seeing there is Tesla got a bigger jump in search interest than Ford did from their own unveiling. This is tremendously bad. Uh, Tesla got more press than Ford did from their own event. Tesla Roddy is reporting, Tesla updates website to reflect pure vision, no radar autopilot, and FSD approach. To which Elon responded, pure vision autopilot is now rolling out in North America. There will be an update of this production release in two weeks. The FSD Beta version 9, also Pure Vision, a week later, FSD subscription will be enabled around the same time. Well, um, I guess that's exciting, but uh, I've been hearing this for five, six months, so I don't know, man. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it, but a week is, I don't know, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe that's less than a month. Who knows? In shoddy reporting, Tesla is found guilty of throttling charging speeds, asked to pay 16 grand to thousands of owners. No, they're not. That is not what happened. In Norway, 30 claimants filed what amounts to a like a local court uh, petition uh, for redress, and uh, the tune of the settlement would be 16,000 to each of the 30 individuals affected. So that's less than half a million bucks. That's what, 480,000. And this is, uh, they didn't lose the court case. They just didn't appear at the court case. Let's look at The Verge's awesome take on it. Tesla faces a huge fine in Norway for throttling battery speeds. Yeah, um, again, 16,000 each of thousands of customers. Again, they did not. A uh, 2019 software update was found to have affected the battery life in Tesla Model S vehicles manufactured between 2013 and 2015, and specifically only the P85s. So it's not that many. Uh, I don't believe that 10,000 P85s were sold. That doesn't sound right, but even if it is, the issue was fixed the same way it was broken via over the air update. Whatever harm you faced was addressed already. You have no lasting damages. It's just lazy reporting, and it annoys me to no end. Financial Timmy's is reporting Tesla set to pay for chips in advance in bid to overcome a shortage. Yes, electric car maker also explores buying foundry, but analysts are like, yeah, that's that's not going to happen. Why would you buy your own chip maker? That is a very difficult skill set. And eh, really, they can just buy their way out of this. Uh, Tesla's going to pay in advance to make sure they get their pieces and their bits and get them all in time. So, you know, Drive Tesla Canada is reporting Tesla's first known semi mega chargers to be installed at the Frito Lays Modesto facility. And good on them. I mean, Modesto doesn't have much going for it. Why not get some big old cool trucks to look at periodically as they shuttle yo chips around? And what a great candidate for early release semis where weight is not an issue. Chips, not sure if you're aware, not super heavy. You could fill a truck to the gills with chips and it ain't gonna get anywhere near the max vehicle a gross weight for the highways. Tesla has installed 200,000 power walls around the world uh, so far. That's fantastic. I had no idea it was so many. I've heard of delays from all kinds of people. I even met a gentleman once in Mexico City who was on vacation. That's not the point. He had a business doing uh, solar roof and power wall sales, and he was very frustrated with the back order situation and how long it took doesn't matter. It seems to be sorting itself out. And as battery supply constraints are alleviated, it will only get better. 
Joe Tetmeyer dropped quite the spicy one yesterday. Exclusive photos from inside Giga Texas. Now, I'm only going to show a couple because I don't have his permission yet, but I have asked for it. And when I get that, I will be doing a video breaking down what's actually in these pictures. So hopefully that comes sooner than later. So this is hot fire next to Tesla construction site group committed to arson attack on electricity supply. They tried to burn the main cable coming into the building. Uh, they didn't do a great job and it didn't really stop anything, didn't really hurt anyone. And uh, apparently these are <laughs> environmental terrorists, activists, really. I don't think you are because why would you attack the people who are actually doing something to save the planet? So what did I miss or misunderstand? Give me all that squealing feedback in the comments and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity flop. And by the way, I do have merch now and I'll leave the link in the description. So I don't know, you can check that out too.